What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to the Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm your host, Ross Uglum, the publisher of Packer Report, and today uh, we are here to talk about an exciting prospect who's probably not going to be a Green Bay Packer, and that is Auburn uh, defensive back Jalen Simpson. And Jalen Simpson is an interesting one because he seems to pop up a lot um, in spots where the Packers actually have picks and he would satisfy a lot of needs. And the reason that he would satisfy a lot of needs, and we'll just get right into the pros here, is that he is a, excuse me, he is a versatile uh, defensive back. He plays all over the field, um, has shown the actual ability to play single high, to play free, to play the quote unquote post safety um, and do it well. But also, you know, I think can play a little corner and can play a little nickel. And that's exciting. Um, you know, just last season, just in 2023, uh, 150 snaps in the box, 195 snaps as a slot corner, uh, one snap of wide corner. So not doing that a ton. Uh, 299 snaps at free safety, 49 snap snaps on a punt cover, 48 snaps on a field goal or extra point block. So it does help on, on special teams. And 2022, um, that's where you see the wide corner reps, 222 snaps at wide corner for Jalen Simpson. In fact, he played more snaps in 2022 as a straight up cornerback. Um, than any other position. Had 143 snaps at free safety, um, 67 snaps on the kick return team, 63 snaps on the punt return team, um, but played a ton of wide corner, a ton. So it's played all over the field and has a versatile body type. Um, the problem with his body type is that he's light, six feet tall, a buck 79. Um, a buck 79 isn't going to do it for the Packers as a corner. And it is, for gosh darn sure, uh, you know, not going to do it for the Packers um, as a safety. And, you know, so you ask Ross, why? Why are, we, why are we talking about this kid? Why does it matter? Well, it matters because he can kind of be like super diet, caffeine-free Cooper DeGene, um, I think, in that he can help you in a number of places. Um you know, maybe he's a defensive only player. Maybe he's not big enough to sp play special teams. But, you know, I would argue that defense is, is more important anyway. Um, really good athlete, though. Really good athlete. And I know he's little. I do. I understand that he's little. But I tried to make the case for Mikey Sanders still. So I'm going to try to make the case um, here for Jalen Simpson. 8.77 RAS. And really, guys, that mostly is getting drugged down by his height and his weight. So... Uh, you know, we're talking about a 4 4 5 40 yard dash. Uh, that is moving, moving. That's moving for a corner for a safety. That's moving, moving. 39 and a half inch vertical is elite. 11 foot, one inch broad. This is an explosive athlete with multiple, multiple, multiple snaps at multiple, multiple, multiple positions in the SEC. Um, he's just exciting, man. And, and I, I, I like watching him play. Um, I enjoyed uh, his film. I, I enjoyed I, I won't say I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a treat um, trying to find him, right? Watching film. And, and that's when I, I mean, that's when like the, the versatility word popped off for me, right? When I am uh, finding it hard to find you on the football field, that's good. I don't mean hard to find you as in you're not making splash plays and you're not important. I mean, like, where the hell are you lining up? And 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 that that part was fun, right? I mean, that that's a cool thing, especially because he wasn't wearing a super, like, um, you know, playmaker number. He wasn't wearing one. He wasn't wearing two. Okay? He wasn't wearing zero. He wasn't easily identifiable. Um, I think he was in, like, 26 and 36 throughout his career. He's just wearing, like, a normal grinder defensive back number. Um, ball production, guys. For real, ball production. Um, very, very impressive. Um, he, he had uh, 14 passes defense over the last four years and seven picks. Uh, one of them went back to the crib. He also uh, 
had a fumble recovery all over the ball. Um, four tackles for loss. Uh, I mean, I like him. I, I think he's a pass defender. But even with that said, 11 missed tackles over the last two full seasons, 22 missed tackles in five years at Auburn. And he only had 20 snaps in 2019, but like he played 200 plus snaps all of the last four years, played 500 plus snaps all of the last three years, and has 22 missed tackles to show for it, playing all over the place. So, not just it's not like, oh, he's an outside corner and guys aren't throwing at him because he's good. And what, like, no, I mean, he made 116 tackles. So it's not like the opportunities weren't there. Um, so for a guy who's 180 pounds, tackles his butt off. And I, I appreciate that. Really, really good in coverage the last two years. Um, a 65.5 passer rating against in 2022 and a 54.0 um, passer rating against in 2023. Um only, I believe, only one penalty um, accepted against him. Um, oh, excuse me, only one penalty declined. So, uh, three total penalties over the last two years. I, I really impressive kid. I, I keep, I keep saying how impressed I am, and, and it's just because um, I want them to take him, and they won't. It's kind, of, it's, it's very similar to the Mikey Sainer still thing where. Um, I want them to take him, and and they probably won't because I mean he he just is he's little, he, he is he is small, um, tackles well for a small guy. And it's kind of what we're talking about too on the density side. Like if he was five nine and a half, a buck eighty, and doing some of this stuff, I'd be making the Mike Sainer still argument. But he's not five nine and a half. He's like five eleven and five eight. He's six feet tall, so he's tall and thin, not short and thick. There, there's a density issue. But, man, if you just look at him and think of him as a pass defender, which is largely what this league is, and you look at just the numbers and you watch the film and you understand that he actually has been a sufficient, if not elite, but like a sufficient tackler, maybe you can let that go. Um, you know, I... Cons, he does struggle to take down big backs and big tight ends. That's on film. That's not just a math thing, you know, looking at um, looking at his, uh, you know, you could look at his RAS card basically and see that he is a less than a tenth, you know, he's a third percentile weight guy for safety. So that would probably tell you that he struggles taking down bigger backs and tight ends, but, I mean, that's on film. Like, you can actually watch that happen. Um, but really, on the con side, I mean, that that's a, that's about it because you, it's hard to find that level of versatility in a conference that good and actual production. I mean, ball production, and then, I mean, you know, what are the two things you can do, right? You can take the ball away, you can play the ball, you can do all that, and you can limit your opponent. Those are the two kind of uh, – uh, proponents of, of, of pass defense, right? Like, are you able to um, take away what your opponent likes to do or, and, or are you able to affect the ball? Well, Jalen Simpson affects the ball. And like I said, um, 65 pass rating against two years ago, 54 pass rating against this year. There's not much being completed into his coverage either. And his coverage is all over the place, as we discussed. So, um, Packers fit, he's not and he is. He's not and he is. And I know that sounds dumb, but he's not a fit in that it, like, would blow my mind. And, and let's, 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 let's talk a little bit about this, too, because, um, let's see, the NFL mock draft database. I love you, Arif. I just don't have time to sift through your consensus big board right at this exact second. <coughs> Excuse me, fellas. Still fighting it, but I hope I sound better. I bet I sound better. Um, 
So Jalen Simpson, and th- this is why there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Jalen Simpson right now is the 147th overall on the consensus big board. My math tells me that's an early five. Let me quick check that out. Let me make that. Let me make sure that's correct. And when the Packers, excuse, when the Packers will kind of start to, yeah, it's early five. It's early mid five. The Packers start to go to the scratch and dent store. They'll, they'll leave Gucci. They'll leave Prada. They'll leave those stores, and they'll go to the scratch and dent store. About it starting in round five. I mean, that's when you get your Kingsley and Enigbari, right? He doesn't fit what they like. Round six, you get Carl's Bro- Carl Brooks. He doesn't fit what they like. You at UDFA, you get your Caleb Jones. He doesn't fit what they like. UDFA, you get your Ladarius Gunter. He doesn't fit what they like. Maybe if enough teams are concerned that Jalen Simpson is 180 pounds, it starts getting down to that comp pick that the Packers lost to the Jets for Alan Lazard. Maybe Goody goes, you know what? He's 179 pounds, but he's really friggin' good. That's your hope. That's your beacon of light if you really want Jalen Simpson because when I talk about a fit, the fit's everywhere. I just told you. I think he's a free safety. I think he's Micah Hyde in a usage way. I think he's a free safety or nickel. And then you can kind of move Xavier McKinney around. You know, you want to talk about interchangeable. This guy is as interchangeable as it gets. Jalen Simpson is exactly what Brian Gutekunst was talking about. He just needs to be 13 pounds heavier, and there's not probably 13 pounds to put on that frame of his. I don't, I don't think you can do it. But when you talk about interchangeability, you talk about versatility, talk about doing it at the SEC level, Jalen Simpson's that dude. And that's why he breaks my heart a little bit, just because – I like him. I like him. Um, as I mentioned, you know, my so I, I've got a four on him. I've got a round four on Jalen. Um, he's my ninth ranked safety. He's 115th overall. So I am 35 spots higher than I'm a round higher than consensus on Jalen Simpson. Um, I, I think he can do it all. I think he's a pass defender. Um, I think he can maybe get you in trouble in the run game. I don't care that much. I know that's going to drive people insane, but I don't, I don't care that much. And like maybe he's your dime, and 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 maybe him being your dime means a number of things. It d- doesn't mean that he has to play the other slot corner position. Maybe you consider it big dime, and it's three three corners and three safeties. Maybe it doesn't matter, but maybe he only comes in in passing down situations. Like, man, is that really worth a fourth or fifth round? But hell yes, hell yes. Especially if he's your backup at free safety and your backup at nickel. Anyway, I think Jalen Simpson rules. That's 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 the end of my uh, my my deal here. Obviously, I'm a round higher on him than consensus. Uh, that's the end of my Jalen Simpson spiel. Um, guys, buy the Packers, uh, buy the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Packer Report. Promo code DAILY, D-A-I-L-Y. Still good for 10% off. That bad boy's out. It's out and about. Um, we're trying to get 1,000 guides sold. I haven't checked the latest numbers. That's our goal. Let's get 1,000 guides sco- uh, sold. Um, I don't know what's going to be yet, and I don't want to promise it because I haven't cleared it with them. I'd like Badger State to do something nice, and I don't know what it would be. I mean, the obvious thing is free rear, but I don't want that to end up on my tab or coming out of my cut. Your boys got to eat. Your boys got kids to feed. But I'd like to maybe do something nice for uh, – maybe we'll we'll empty out our Packer Report merch for anybody who comes to the event that actually bought a guide. You can show me the guide. Show me your gum road. Show me the PDF on on your phone, whatever. I'd like to take care of those of you that buy the guide. If you do come out, um, and one more time, uh, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, Cheesehead TV, uh, draft party at the Lyric Room in Green Bay. Then Friday night, your boys at Badger State Brewing, Andy Herman, Packaday Podcast, social hour from 4 to 5.30, and your boy taking it home. Pick 41, pick 58, pick 88, pick 91, all at the Packer Report draft party at Badger State Brewing. Guys, have a phenomenal rest of your day and go Pack Go.